graphical user interface for, can, for installing and configuring drivers which you cannot ship by default. Either because they have a restricted license, see NVIDIA, FGL, RX, or the infamous Broadcom driver, or because we already shipped the stable release and yeah, we want to provide updates for those. So we basically designed a very simple and very narrow focused user interface around installing stuff like the NVIDIA driver. So, the peop so a user would get a notification after the first installation, hey, you could install this better graphics driver to, well, to enable Compass, etc. but hey, beware, it's unsupported, and give him some lecture about the reason why we don't install it by default. So, but basically, that, that, that was it. And in Hardy, we finally bolted so many new features on it that it was really time for a complete rewrite. So we redesigned the entire thing and turned it into an upstream project so that other uh, distributions could use it as well. But, yeah, but it, uh, the, the user interface essentially didn't change. So if you upgrade Gatsby to Hardy, it doesn't really look entirely different, but the entire code is completely different. And I actually talked to Red Hat and Novell and other distributions, and they are actually interested in porting it to their distributions as well. So I'm really positive that it can become more of a standard tool and I'll get contributions from other distros and also that device driver manufacturers will start to notice it and use it. So at the last Linux Foundation Summit, all these distributions and Dell sat together and looked at the current situation, the driver, driver package uh, situation in Linux, which at the moment is a real mess. So if there is a hardware vendor producing a device, there is no really a way to, to provide this driver to, Linux, to all the Linux distributions because we all have our own custom or really hacky ways to provide those drivers, but none of those are standardized. So a hardware vendor can easily produce a driver for Ubuntu or a driver for Red Hat, or he maintains like... Uh, connections to both of the distributions and has to do twice the amount of work. So we all sat together and first explained to each other how we handle all those cases and then we, we fully decided that it's time for standardizing all the workflow and the tools for this to provide the way to produce and provide uh, device drivers for Linux and pretty much all of the distributions. And one part of this was of course Jockey as the bits that provides the, both the user interface and also well, a way to, to find those drivers out there in the net in the first place. So the idea was instead of well, forcing all the third party drivers into the distributions and basically ignoring all the other community third party drivers out there, we would provide a standard way to make them accessible for the user. So we came up with the idea of this abstract idea of device driver database where we could basically have a standard way of blessing uh, a standard package for a device driver out there. So as a community member, I could this would then finally give me a sane and easy and safe and secure way to provide my updated driver to other users as opposed to the mess that we have today you buy a new hardware, a piece of hardware, plug it in, nothing happens. So you go to Google, find those crazy five recipes for wget, this URL, pi bash, or, well, get this source code over there and build it there. So it's really, really silly. So we designed this kind of a device driver database and a standard format for providing source, uh, the, the device drivers in the source and binary format. And uh, basically, we define Jockey as the tool to find those drivers and to install them, to remove them, and basically all the bits that distributions normally do with packages, like authenticating and making sure that the, the package is still in the same state, will be hidden again. So that we can reduce the cases where people have to actually, if you go to Google and try to install third-party drivers in the real way, real and nasty way, like sudo, wget, etc. And also be much more robust for upgrades. 
Whereas right now, every time you install a custom driver, this won't last very long until the next kernel API comes. Right, so how much of this is done? I just released the, the next uh, version of Jockey, which does have support for querying a web driver database. Unfortunately, we don't have the server side yet, so it was supposed to become a Google Summer of Code project, but the student, well, suddenly went to, off to some other project. So if there is anybody who is interested in writing such a thing, <laughs> then, yeah, please get to me and we'll figure it out. But otherwise, we'll probably have to go with this, like a, a smaller per, per distribution instance of this. But yeah, in any way, it provides us a good way to standardize this workflow. And I also recently added uh, support for handling third-party repositories. So at the moment, we don't really have uh, like GPG signed PPAs, for example, which we would need for the community to provide such drivers, but anyone else could set up a third-party repository, and then we can use our normal distro QA to look at those repository and say, yes, we certify this, and then put our stamp on it, put it into our device driver database, and suddenly it will become available for all the users out there. And if the users say, hey, I want to use this third-party community repository as well, it's still much easier and much safer than we have today. Okay, common problems. Yeah, our biggest blocker for using all of this magic in Ubuntu at the moment is that we don't really support third-party device driver packages at all because they have no way to track the kernel RBA change. But we solved this, I think, we have a pretty good chance to clean up all this mess and use all of this infrastructure, also together with the other distributions. So that eventually we, as all of the Linux world together, has a much better lever to put on the, driver manufacturer, uh, the hardware manufacturers to provide drivers for Linux so that we can benefit from each other. Right. I think that's it. Any questions? Oh, Jockey. <laughs> so the original name, as you might know, was Restricted Manager. And, but the new focus of it is much more than that. So we also we want to support free drivers, which are backported from Trunk, etc. So we just needed a new name. <laughs> and yeah, it was back in London, so we just looked for a new name. And uh, we had some well, proposals like Driver Kit. <coughs> Too many kids. But eventually, Jockey was well, someone who drives the horse and controls it, and <laughs> I just felt it like would be a good name. <laughs> Luke? Um, does it also take care of saying, we've got the, the kernel for this from uh, case, it's free wireless driver from the kernel, but not the same one, does it take care of that? Right, we currently do this for the special case of Broadcom, and, but in theory the infrastructure is there to provide firmware for any device you have. So, yes. So we provide a set of standard, we call that handlers, so which is a piece of code which handles a particular class of device drivers, for example, an XOR driver, which knows how to modify XOR conf in a generic way, etc. And we have such things for firmware and kernel modules and soon for printer drivers. Right, for example, printer drivers, we, we also plan to query the Linux printing.org database, which is already an existing driver database for printers, well-maintained, so we could easily integrate this into this infrastructure so that you plug in the printer. If you don't have the driver for this, you can get it from there. Okay. <laughs> right, so the Scots question was that we currently use guidance backends to modify XORConf. And, well, if you have something better, then I'm happy to hear about it. If and maybe XORConf has the, an official library now to pause and change XORConf, but I think I heard some rumors about it, but I haven't looked at it yet. So if you know something, something more, then please come to me. So you were next. Um, well, I mean, this is pretty much what uh, on our side of the control. So usually we don't want to touch existing systems. So the, the big problem is always if you ship in an update to all the users, 
then there will be always at least one user for whom the new driver version breaks. So the idea is that with this driver database, we can be very specific. We can say, for this vendor product ID, we tested that it works. So we will use the new driver version only on that particular piece of hardware. And we don't touch existing installations. But of course, in some cases, we can say, this doesn't support new hardware, but this actually fixes bugs in existing hardware. So then we can just as well like, change the settings in the driver database and say, from now on, use this update. Of course, this is only infrastructure. So we still, this, this doesn't relieve us of doing QA, certification, and so on. It just provides us a standard channel to chip source drivers.